Tokyo can be a pretty interesting place, from its busy intersections to its cool and modern museums, one-of-a-kind markets, and transforming Gundams. But something that makes Tokyo really unique, I think, is its transit system, specifically its trains and light rails. Before we get to Tokyo, let's do a quick comparison. I come from Toronto, Canada. Now admittedly, the transit system there is pretty simple. The subway only has 4 lines, there's only a few places to transfer between lines, and there's only 75 stations, which is the highest in other comparable Canadian cities. Now I've been to Hong Kong before, and the transit system was also very straightforward. More lines than Toronto and Vancouver but very clear and concise to read, transfer points were easily marked, and I didn't have any problems. Now let's finally all get on a plane and go to Tokyo, Japan. Now I know how this goes. You finally land at the airport, and when you plan this trip, your partner told you to get a, one of those cool travel books because you'll need it and it'll help you. You went to the bookstore and you kind of went through a few and you finally settled on Lonely Planet, mainly because it has a pull-out map. You look at the map for the very first time, and you see this. Seriously? What in the candy apple blue crap is this? I can't even read the frickin' lines. It's okay, don't freak out. Okay, what's this? JR East? No, no, you don't want that. You want the subway map, let's flip it over. Oh my god, this does not look any better. That's right, the Tokyo metro system is so complicated that it takes two different companies and two different complicated maps to outline the whole thing. If you put the two maps on top of each other, you'll notice it's not only not readable, but it's like a sick joke. Now this complication doesn't have to be a bad thing, and actually in contrast, I think it's a good thing. There's a lot of options and you can pretty much get anywhere within the city and the cost isn't ridiculous. But as you can see, it can be incredibly intimidating, especially for tourists that just rely on the map to get around town. But don't freak out, you don't need to know everything, just a few key things to successfully navigate the Tokyo transit system. This brings me to my next interesting point, which is the payment system. Unlike Toronto, the further you go on the train in Tokyo, the more it'll cost you. So your fee is based on the distance. This only applies for trains and rails. Most of the buses will be flat fare, but you'll want to be careful and check anyway. Instead of making your life difficult in doing the math, I recommend picking up an IC card, which is one of these Suica or Pasmo cards. It's just a branding thing, so they do exactly the same thing. If you're from Hong Kong, these operate extremely closely to the Octopus card, and if you're from Toronto, this is basically what the Presto card should have been, except the Presto is a piece of crap. To pick one up, hopefully you're already at a big station, such as Shinjuku. You can buy one at the machine, or ask someone at the information desk, as they typically speak English. Just a quick note, when you initially buy your IC card, there is a 500 yen convenience fee. So for example, if you put in 2000 yen, you're only going to have a final balance of 1500. Unfortunately, Japan is a cash-driven society, so remember when getting an IC card or just topping it up, it's cash only, no credit cards. The cool thing about this card is, not only does it take care of all the subway and transit related things, but it also works on vending machines and pretty much anything inside the subway, such as stores and things like that. There are many lines in Tokyo, but the most interesting one to me is the Yamanate line. This above ground light rail is considered to be one of Tokyo's busiest trains, and as a tourist there's a very high chance that you're going to use it. The good thing about this route is that instead of running just north to southbound or west to eastbound, it actually runs in a loop. So it'll either run clockwise or counterclockwise. Also, you don't have to worry about express trains on this route because it will stop at every station. Most of the tourist attractions are covered by this line. Most people tend to stay at Shinjuku because it's sort of the center of all the tourist things. It's a great place for food and it has the world famous red light district, which incidentally has two cool attractions, including the robot restaurant and the Godzilla theater. There is also Ikebukuro, which has great food, and the mall for your Pokemon Center. Shibuya, which is the famous busy intersection and all the photos. And then finally, Akihabara, which has all your anime and gaming needs. If you have data, it doesn't hurt to double check where you're going with Google Maps. Oftentimes, they'll tell you exactly which line you need to take, and if you're lucky, it'll even tell you which platform to get on, which happens for most of the JR and subway lines. 
Remember when I said the Yamanote line only had one type of train? Well, it's not always going to be that easy. Let's take a look at this map here. This is the Seibu Ikebukuro line, and there is a shitstorm number of express trains. Like, of the nine trains you see here, six of them have the word express in it, and I just feel like at that many trains, the word just loses its value. What's wrong with just calling it the red train or the orange train? No, they gotta be all complicated. The name convention aside, this isn't actually a bad thing. If you take a look at the map and spend one minute to actually analyze it, it makes a lot of sense. There's nine different types of train, the local obviously stops at every station, there's a limited express one that goes pretty much from beginning to end, and then the other express trains stop in the middle sort of accordingly depending on the type of train. Now, again, is this bad? I don't think so. Maybe it's a little intimidating for travelers and foreigners the first time, but as a local I think it makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of interesting information and signs on the trains in Tokyo. The female-only subway cart is probably the most popular one on the internet. I mean, this is sort of a blog post or YouTube video by itself, but long story short, between Monday and Friday and specific work hours, usually in the morning, some carts are just for females only, and it's because sexual harassment is a really big thing in Japan. Interesting fact, cell phone cameras, by law, the shutter sound has to go off even if you put it on do not disturb or mute mode. So, you know, it's a pretty big problem here. The other signs just remind you to keep your mobile phone on silent or just to make sure your headphones don't make too much noise. In general, be very mindful to others. But there's a lot of other useful information too. Taking the Yomanate line again as an example, you'll often see this screen, which is just a map of all the stations except there's a number associated to each one. This number determines the number of minutes until you reach that station. So for example, it's going to take 2 minutes for the next stop, 4 minutes after that, and then so on and so forth. There is also a nice little alternative view just for the next few stations. This next one is probably my favorite one. Not only does it clearly outline all the other lines that it transfers to, but more importantly it tells you which cart you're currently on. That piece of information by itself is pretty useless, but combined with the map above is actually extremely helpful. It tells you where you are relative to all of the other exits in the station and where all the escalators are. This is extremely important when you're meeting up with friends and they say meet at the east exit versus the west exit. Some of the stations here can be pretty intense, so you really don't want to get lost by going to the wrong exit. That's all I have for this video, but yeah, the Tokyo subway is pretty interesting. I hope you guys will be prepared for it if you're planning to come for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Thanks for watching everyone!